Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome to my next Let's Play. Let's play Kirby's Epic Yarn. I know that a lot of you guys have been looking forward to this Let's Play from pretty much the first time this game came out to the U.S., so, uh... I am happy that I'm finally going to be able to play this game for you guys. I love this game. I'm going to probably be ranting about this game a lot during this playthrough just because of how amazing I think this game is. And a lot of people, I don't think, give this game enough credit. But anyway, we're going to be doing a one-player playthrough, as usual. Uh, this is my practice file right here, but I'm going to be going to File 3, the new game. So let's go ahead and start with that. And I believe we uh, immediately start with a cutscene, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch that. Welcome to Dreamland, a kingdom famous for peace and quiet. It's the perfect little land, if you like that sort of thing. Lately, there have been rumors of a caped sorcerer going around turning people into yarn. That's right, yarn. One day, Kirby saw his favorite food, a bright red tomato, on top of a bush. Down the hatch. But when Kirby tried to eat it, a caped sorcerer appeared. My name is... Hey, what are you doing? Stop that! No, that's my magic metamato. Kirby gulped the metamato right down. Just then, a white sock around the sorcerer's neck began to glow. Then it sucked Kirby up. <laughs> this grass feels funny, Kirby thought. It feels like pants. And to Kirby's surprise, he saw that his entire body was made out of yarn. Then, he saw a yarn monster chasing a blue yarn boy. Somebody help me! Kirby tried to swallow the monster up. But the air went right through his body. Kirby wondered what he should do. Suddenly, Kirby transformed into a car. He drove away with the boy and left the monster behind to eat his dust. Apparently, that strange metamato gave Kirby the power to seamlessly transform into a car and who knows what else. Okay, so right away, I have to give my props to that narrator. I love that narrator. That narrator is just so awesome. Probably my favorite character in the entire game, in all honesty. <laughs> Anyway, here we go. Um, thanks for saving me. What's that? You say you're from another world? Wow, welcome to Patchland. You just stick with me and I'll show you the ropes. Don't you mean yarn? <laughs> okay, I'm not funny. So, uh, we're going to go through a little tutorial level right here. Patch Castle. This is my castle, so feel free to look around here as much as you want. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, this game, in terms of the overworld, works a lot like uh, Kirby's Adventure and uh, Kirby's not, uh, Return to Dreamland. You know, where you have kind of an overworld where you can go to any level you want. Uh, we can't really do anything right now, though, so we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, tutorial level, which is Patch Castle. Now, there's a lot of differences between this game and other Kirby games, as you might figure. For one, Kirby no longer has a copy ability, or he can't even swallow enemies either. Because he was turned into yarn, he no longer has that. But he does have the ability to use a uh, little yarn attack, I guess. This is how you can attack enemies, grab onto things, and uh, just perform, f perform other actions. Uh, you can't actually fly with Kirby either. That's another ability that was kind of taken away from Kirby. But whenever you run with Kirby, he turns into a car. Whenever you jump in the air and then press the 2 button, you can float down with a parachute. 
Um, I'm trying to remember the exact... Oh yeah, if you jump and then press down, Kirby turns into a weight. And uh, there's a few other yarn abilities too, but we'll see those as we progress through the game. So, you know, Kirby's a platformer. Uh, these uh, items that I'm collecting right now, they're beads. They kind of act as the currency for the game. And they also determine what kind of score you get from the end of the level. Uh, I'll be going over that later. Uh, you can pick up enemies, turn them into yarn balls, and use them as projectiles against other enemies. Okay, I'm going to have to use enemies to uh, break these blocks right here. The uh, solid blocks like these, you need a projectile to destroy them. But the uh, boxes that don't have like any uh, insides, like they're just like a perfect square, you can just grab those with Kirby's uh, yarn attack. And uh, that right there is a bigger bead that gives you more beads. And as you can see, that little meter at the top, uh, that's up to a bronze medal. Uh, the further you go, the better the medal you'll get. I mean, we're going to try to go for a gold medal in every level, so that's what I'm going to be aiming for in this playthrough. Uh, whenever you're in the water with Kirby, he turns into a little submarine, which is pretty cool. And you can also climb up ladders, although I think Kirby could do that to begin with in the just normal Kirby games. Uh, those items right there, uh, they'll come into play at the end of the level. I'll show those then. And yeah, you can use the yarn attack to uh, pull little patches like that. And you can also use them to pull zippers, which uh, we'll see those later as well. Uh, here is a main part of the game, these treasure boxes. There are three treasure boxes in every level, not counting the boss levels. And uh, each of the boxes contain either two treasures or a CD. And, uh, like I said, there's three per level, so we'll have to look out for those. Uh, because this is a 100% playthrough, we are going to go for all the treasures, so I will show you how to get each and every single one. And now we're going to use the uh, parachute to uh, fall down and collect these beads. So yeah, as you can see, this game quite different from the uh, other Kirby games. It has a much different feel to it. But while a lot of people interpret that as kind of a bad thing, I actually think it's a good thing because I feel like the game developers work more on the presentation of the game, not necessarily the gameplay. And normally, while I'd be against that, for this game, I feel like the gameplay kind of depends on the presentation. And the presentation is just spectacular. Like, the whole yarn aspect looks amazing, and in my opinion, this game is probably one of the best games I've ever played that has an outstanding musical score. I love the music in this game. It's incredible. It's just... I love it. I love the music in this game, and you're going to hear me talk about that throughout this Let's Play. Okay, so when you see this wheel right here, you've reached the end of the level. And uh, based on what section of the grid the little arrow at the top lands on, depends on how many extra beads you get to add on to your score. So uh, we're going to aim for the red section. Ah, uh, not quite. If I would have waited just a little bit longer, I would have actually gotten it. But either way, we did get a gold medal, so we don't have to worry about replaying this level. I don't think you get anything for getting all gold medals, but it is, you know, considered a completionist act, uh, completionist part of this game, so I'm going to try to go for that. So we are going to go for a gold medal in every level. Thanks for your help, the blue yarn boy said. Not that I needed it. I'm Prince Fluff. Ever since Yin Yarn the Sorcerer ripped Patchland into seven pieces, you just can't go anywhere without running into these horrible... But Fluff was interrupted when they were attacked by a huge three-eyed blob of yarn. Ew! Gross! Stop it! But before the blob could eat Prince Fluff, Kirby transformed and smashed it to smithereens in a most spectacular fashion. Among the little blob bits, there was a shimmering piece of spiraling yarn. That's it. That's the magic yarn, Fluff exclaimed. This was what Prince Fluff had been looking for. Yin Yarn had stolen the magic yarn from Patchland.
the yarn weaved its way into the fabric of the kingdom and stitched two pieces of patchland together. What about the other pieces? I've got to find the rest of them. Kirby, always happy to help, decided to help his friend recover the missing pieces. And the two began their journey to stitch Patchland back together. So hooray, we had another epic cutscene right there. And we can actually go on to the next world. This is the only level in this world, so we don't have to worry about finding any other levels here. There's a few other things we can now do in this section, but it's uh, nothing that important. Uh, we have Patch Plaza right here. This is where you can kind of see your game progress. You have all these little uh, doors, and each one has a percentage above it. And uh, that percentage is tell you how far you are through the game. So we have 4% of the cast, which I'm guessing is just the... Uh, um, enemies you see and also the main characters too. We have 1% for the stuff, which are all the uh, items you collect, uh, most of them from the treasure chests, but you'll see other items in other places too. Uh, you have fabrics, which we don't have any of that right now. We have 2% of the metals, 1% of the tunes, Remember, you get a CD in every single level. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, you will get a CD in every single level. And we have 22% of the flicks, which are the uh, cutscenes we'll see throughout the game. So yeah, that is what uh, the um, Pouch Plaza is. So we can go ahead and leave this now. I'll periodically be checking that as we go through the game. And then, of course, we have uh, these two places which are not open yet. And over here, we have this guy. We'll talk to him before we go on. Prince Fluff, what an unexpected surprise. Oh, and who might your friend here be? Lord Kirby, you say. He is visiting us from another world, you say? How exciting. My name is Dom Wool, and it is my pleasure to make your acquaintance. Lord Kirby is helping you save our beloved Patchland? Oh, that's just wonderful. I am the manager of Quilty Court here. Please, come inside for a moment. I insist. So this kind of introduces a side part of the game. A side that I'll really not be trying to focus on very much. Welcome to your new home, hehe. <laughs> well, I suppose it's not much to look at just yet but I would be honored to have one of Prince Fluff's guests saying here. Oh cool, we actually get a piece of furniture. A proper home must be properly furnished. Please accept this as a gift from me. Feel free to furnish your new place in whatever way you desire. We'll discuss the rent later. You don't actually have to pay the rent, but um, you know, it's kind of a joke. Go ahead and enjoy the space. If you have any questions, I'll be around. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I hear one of my other tenants walking by outside. So, in Kirby's apartment, you can actually uh, decorate the apartment using the uh, furniture that you collect throughout the game and the fabric as well. Uh, you um, w use the uh, Wiimote in a horizontal motion when you do this, or, well, use it like a remote control, basically. So you can uh, place items in places of your choosing. We can use the two items we just got, have a little um, throne, and we can also um, put the chandelier right above it. Uh, don't we also have another chair we could use? or Where's that other chair he gave us? I'm pretty sure he gave us another chair we could put down. Hmm, well, regardless, I don't see... Oh, there it is, okay. We'll put a chair here. And you can also copy objects. You don't have to have, you know, just one of every object in. So we have two chairs, a chandelier, and a throne chair. And that's really all we have right now. This is not a very important part of the game. This is mainly just for fun. You don't have to do this. So, you know, I wish they would have actually done more with this in this game, but I'll get into that more later. 
I'm sure you guys probably want to see more of the actual game now, and I would like to try to get another level done before the end of this video. So we're going to go ahead and take our first steps into World 1, Grassland. Why does it seem like all the first levels are Grasslands? They don't try to... They're not very creative with the names sometimes. But anyway, um, we only have one level open right now. You'll see, like, where all the other levels are, but we can't access them yet. So, uh, first we're going to go to Fountain Gardens. And this is when the main part of our adventure will actually begin. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, we got some beads. Uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, whenever you get hit by an enemy, uh, you actually will lose your beads, because you don't actually die in this game. Uh, whenever you get hit, you lose beads. Whenever you fall off a cliff, you lose beads. Um, yeah, you don't actually die in this game. Which, uh, a lot of people actually use that as an excuse for why this game is terrible, which I think is ridiculous. I mean... I mean, when you look at, like, a lot of other games that, like, people are raving about, especially now, like, um, Rayman Origins, like, I hear that you don't actually die in that game, you can, but you just really just start back to where you were, you don't actually have to go at the beginning of the level or start over or anything like that, and, like, a lot of people seem to like those games more anyway, so I never really understood the, oh, you can't die in this game, that means this game sucks excuse that a lot of people use. It's ridiculous. People just don't know how to use common sense, I guess. But yeah, like I said, you can't die in this game. But you can lose your beads, and if you lose them in brutal ways, and when I say brutal ways, I mean get squished or fall off the stage or, you know, any of the lethal ways like that, you'll lose a lot more beads than you would if you just get hit by an enemy. And even if you do lose beads, you can still pick them up. But, um, you know, whenever you get squashed or whenever you fall off a ledge, they're going to be a lot harder to get because you can't go back down in the hole to lose them. Because you'll lose them again and that won't do anything for you. So, if you want to get the gold medal scores, you have to be very, very careful. And am I missing one of the uh, little tokens or whatever? I probably am. You don't have to collect all of those, they just help out if you want a uh, high score and you want a better chance to get the gold medal if you're, you know, kind of screwing up throughout the level. Also, try to throw enemies against other enemies. It won't always give you beads, but most of the time it will. So, uh, I just want to make sure you get all the beads you can. Also, when you're on the tree, keep shaking the tree so all the beads fall out. Because I believe if you shake all the beads, or collect all the beads, you'll get an extra star. Which will naturally help your bead count. And we can do that again right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that guy. A lot of the most dangerous enemies in this game are the enemies that have projectiles. So look out for those the most. Because they can always cause trouble. I don't think the Waddle Dees can actually destroy you unless they have spears. In that case, yeah, they can probably uh, make you lose beads, but the normal ones, I think you can just run into them and nothing will happen. We'll uh, take down that little uh, zipper and we can go down here for another treasure, which is a fountain. Did we get the first treasure already? Yeah, we did. We got the flower sofa. And if we open up this little pocket right here, it's a warp, which will take us to the very top of this building right here. Where we can get a few more beads, but that's basically all we can get. Nothing of really note over there, I guess. Let's see, you can collect some more beads right here. And up here, you can find another one of those little, uh... I don't know what you'd call those. I'm just going to call them ending pieces because they're part of the ending wheel. And there's the Fountain Garden soundtrack if you want to listen to that whenever you want. Got a few extra beads right there. And you have to go inside this building. We can get a few more beads, and I believe this is also 
where you can get the last of the ending pieces, if I remember correctly. Just climb up here, and yes it is! Okay, so... I'll try to actually get the uh, best score this time. And I can't actually go down, so I have to do this again. But now, we'll go to the other side. Which is how we'll actually leave this level. And up here, we have just another one of those star beads. I also love how they, like, put the beads in some sort of design in every level. And, oh, I thought that was cute. I feel bad for ruining that romantic moment. But, oh, well. They'll come back alive and enjoy their romance again. And uh, here's another part of the game. Whenever you see, like, one of these things right here... This is what kind of replaces the copy transformations. Here we have the Kirby Robot. And I especially love how it plays the uh, super spicy curry music while uh, you do this from uh, Kirby Streamland 1. And yeah, with this machine you can uh, tilt the Wii Remote to uh, angle the direction of the missiles, and you can uh, just throw the missiles with the one button. The two button you can use to jump slash hover. And yeah, these sections are also really cool. I believe there's like eight to ten of these transformations. Each one works in a bit of a different way, so they're all different and they're all unique. Also, watch out because whenever you're the robot and you get hit, you, you lose a lot of star beads, so if you get hit, make sure you pick them up before they disappear. Okay, we'll destroy those guys, keep going. And when you see this little stick right here, that means the section's over. And usually that means that the ending wheel is right after that. So here we go. Now let's see if we can actually get in the red this time. Come on. Okay, good. You never know what's going to happen at that last moment. Sometimes it'll go over to the next section or... Other times it might just stay where it is, so you gotta make sure you get lucky with that. But yeah, we got a lot of beads in that level. And we got all the treasures, which means you get a hundred additional beads for each treasure. And we have the butterfly patch. These patches, all these patches serve is the purpose of opening the next level. So whenever you're in the world map, throw the patch, and you'll open up the next level in this little cute cinematic. Every level has a cute cinematic like this. But I think that's actually going to be it for this first video. I think we've done enough for this first video. Uh, next time, we'll continue World 1, and we'll go to Flower Fields. This has been Slum Kirby. This has been Let's Play Kirby's Epic Yarn. Hope you guys enjoyed the first video, and hope you guys enjoy the rest of the project. Later, folks.